Law enforcement, first responders, and members of the military took children on a shopping spree during the annual Shop with a Hero event. A small army of volunteers helped the Lake Orion Lions Club pack up and deliver food, toys, and essentials to local families in need. He may be a mean one, but the Grinch couldn't keep families away from Orion Township's Breakfast with the Grinch at the Orion Center. And dedicated runners and walkers braved chilly temperatures to take part in the annual Snow Dash 5K on the Pollyon Trail. Hello everyone, I'm Stacey Calloway. We'll have those stories and more on this edition of ON TV News. Many local families may have found themselves struggling in 2022 thanks to staggering inflation and other factors, but the Lake Orion community always seems to come through to help out their friends and neighbors. On the evening of Thursday, December 8th, dozens of law enforcement and first responders arrived at Meyer in Oxford to make sure area children have a memorable Christmas. Shop with a Hero paired up with representatives of the Oxford Police Department and Oakland County Sheriff's Office with local families. Donations from local businesses and individuals help make the event possible. Actually, Meyer started this like 20 years ago. Uh, they started out with having Shop with a Hero, a couple of kids at a time. So over time, over the last 20 years, uh, us, the fire department, the sheriff's department, did some fundraisers and got some more money together so we can have more than just a couple of kids. And it's bloomed into uh, this large of an event every year. And because of Meyer. Um, and setting that platform for us, we're all able to do that. So everybody does their own fundraising in their own way. We have uh, residents in our community that uh, give to this, uh, this lovely um, event. We've got businesses in our town. If most of our businesses and our residents, I mean, we just have a couple of kids. So we have to thank all of those guys for contributing and making this happen today. So it's our wonderful community that, you know, that's why I work here. Lieutenant Darren Ofiara talked about how the Sheriff's Office gets partnered up with local families in need. So right now, the families are going to be tied in with the school resource officers. So they're going to be the ones that's best tied into the community of who may need a little bit extra assistance. So right now we go through those and we try to find out who needs help the most. Orion Township Supervisor Chris Barnett showed up to tag along with the kids shopping with the Sheriff's deputies. So this is one of my favorite days of the year to see our deputies, our firefighters, our first responders hanging out with kids, shopping. Some of them not much experience. I shop with Lieutenant Ophira, not a very good shopper. <laughs> uh, it's, it's, it's really special. First of all, the front end of the, the, the community donating. I had a breakfast last Friday with some local business owners. I think we raised about $2,000 just over breakfast. Uh, Bill Galling threw in $1,000. Um, so it's, it's really cool to see the community stepping up and then the kids that are shopping and they're buying blankets and shoes, I mean, a few toys, but I mean, they're so sensible in their purchases. Like kids to get a brand, a brand new pair of shoes are more excited than most kids would be for toys. So it's, it pulls at your heartstrings and it's just, it's a great event. Right now, unfortunately, we're in a very negative uh, connotation with law enforcement. So going out with the kids right now gives them a better idea of uh, we're not always the bad guy. We're there to help. We are here to assist the community and that's what we're here for. But we can't do any of this without the community support. Uh, this has been completely almost grassroots between business and the community with just citizens themselves. So we're just there to facilitate with the kids, but it's really the, communi the community that's doing this. Less than a week later, the Lake Orion Police Department gathered at the Target store on Brown Road for an event of their own, although on a slightly smaller scale. Fifteen kids from Blanche Sims Elementary School were paired up with police officers and given a $150 gift card to spend in the store. This is the thing that we all look for every year because to see the smiles on the kids' faces um, when they're actually picking out something for them is it, that's long, lifelong, la lasting. Um, it's something that I, I get goosebumps just talking about. It, so. The COVID pandemic had a huge impact on the program over the past two years, preventing organizers from hosting an in-store event. In 2022, Shop with a Hero returned to Target thanks to generous donations from the community. We have a lot of donors. Uh, main donor is Tim Hortons. Uh, Jeff uh, from uh, Tim Hortons 
was a big donor. Uh, Volucci Electricity was a main donor. And there was a lot of individuals that out there that actually donated also. Target has done a phenomenal job. They have a whole team that's going to be here dedicated just for us, making sure that we have registers and everything like that. They've stocked up the toy, toy aisle for everybody, and uh, we should be. Uh, it, Target's been phenomenal for us. Back in November, we brought you a story about the Lions Club annual fundraiser that helps support their Christmas bags program. The money raised at that event was put into action thanks to the efforts of a small army of volunteers. On Friday, December 16th, members of the Lake Orion Lions Club were joined by volunteers of all ages to sort and box up food donations for local families in need. Lake Orion students have been collecting non-perishable food items for weeks, in addition to toys, hats, gloves, and more. Um, it's been absolutely amazing. We have um, volunteers from all over the community that came to sort cans and and uh, non-perishable items to get ready for the Christmas baskets. And uh, we had the superintendent of schools, we had children from about two up, and we had seniors that needed to have a walker or cane to, to move around. And then we also brought in the special needs kids that came from Pine Tree uh, Center. So they're pretty exciting, the, the breadth and depth of the people that came today. This year, the Lions Club Christmas Basket Program served 200 families and 80 senior citizens, which equates to over 900 individuals, a significant increase over past years. On Saturday, volunteers returned to the Cirque building to add perishables like meat and dairy. Then vehicles set out to deliver the baskets to the families on the list. Each family or individual receives approximately two weeks worth of groceries to help get them through the holidays. Well, this week I called uh, 15 families from one of our schools. It was from the Early, early Learning uh, Center. And they were all sorts of reactions, but very, very grateful. One woman cried when I told her I was bringing it, and I cried just responding. And I told her, hey, this is our job. This is what we're supposed to do. This is all about service. And then I also talked to one of the schools and realized that we had a family that really needed a little bit more. So in that case, we said, maybe, maybe we had a few more canned goods and, and things like to that one family that is in really, really bad need. Donations and fundraisers help make the program possible, including the Christmas for Everyone charity auction hosted by Malash Palace back in November. In addition to providing the space for the event, Malash made a rather sizable donation to help the Lions Club reach their goals. The Grinch first appeared in the 1957 Dr. Seuss book, How the Grinch Stole Christmas, followed by the enormously popular animated TV special in 1966. The character has since appeared in movies, on stage, and even in video games. I wouldn't be surprised if Santa Claus was just a little jealous of the Grinch popularity. On the morning of Saturday, December 10th, families travel to Whoville, otherwise known as the Orient Center, for the township's seventh annual breakfast with the Grinch event. Children enjoyed a meal of green eggs and ham and washed it down with some green Grinch juice. They were able to mix together some reindeer food, write letters to Santa, and create colorful craft projects. The 2018 animated version of the Grinch played on the screens, and of course, the little ones were able to get a photo opportunity with the mean one himself. This is um, it's a very jolly, fun, um, kind of kooky um, atmosphere here today. We um, are trying to go for a Whoville, you know, themed Christmas. So the decorations a little over the top, a little um, outrageous, but it's it's all in good fun. After hosting a breakfast with Santa for a number of years, the Parks and Rec staff changed it to a Grinch-themed event in 2016, which proved to be tremendously popular. In 2022, organizers offered two sessions capped at 60 children plus family members and both sessions sold out. All the kids um, come pretty much dressed up in some kind of Grinch outfit, whether it's, you know, dresses or shirts or hats. Even the parents get involved and dress up as well. Yeah, so um, I do know for a fact that we have repeat customers every year that come to this event. They love it, um, and it's definitely a tradition that we're going to carry on because the kids do love it, especially with the newer Grinch movie out. More and more kids are getting into the Grinch um, over, you know, the traditional Santa. While many of us are dreaming of a white Christmas, only the most hardcore runners can be found outside running in the stuff. Recently, a group of dedicated fitness buffs braved the elements on the Polyan Trail. 
On the morning of Sunday, December 18th, approximately 200 runners and walkers arrived at the Orient Center for the start of Orient Township's annual Snow Dash 5K. Participants of all ages gathered at the starting line and at approximately 9 a.m., the race was underway. Uh, the conditions are fantastic. Um, we were a little caught off guard. We weren't supposed to get any snow, but here it is. It's a snow dash and it's snowing. Um, the course is being gravel is in beautiful shape. I had the guys go out and check for any standing water in the last couple of days to make sure we didn't have any icy conditions out there. Um, it's, it's beautiful out there. It's a beautiful day to be on the trail. The course itself, it's a 5K uh, on the Pollyann Trail, starts and ends here at the Orient Center. It goes down, crosses over Green Shield, crosses over Scripps, loops around, and comes back. So it's an out and back. Beautiful course, nice flat, no hills, gorgeous. The first snow dash was held in 2017 with 50 runners. This year, 164 runners pre-registered with a few dozen showing up on race day, bringing the total close to 200 participants. Crossing the finish line first was 37-year-old Eric Huffman of Davison. It was the first time he took part in the snow dash. Eric finished with a time of 1735.8. So the snow on the trail uh, was pretty slippery. Uh, we had talked before the race if we wanted to wear trail shoes or just our racers. And uh, we ended up, I just wore my regular shoes, but it was pretty slick out there. It's definitely challenging and the wind was pretty strong today. Yeah, it was, it was tough. <laughs> for me personally, it's for mental health. It, it clears my mind. Um, I know uh, it's an important topic to me, but for me, like, yeah, mental health is important, go. and this is, this is why I do it. The 2022 Snow Dash was made possible thanks to the sponsorship of Genesis Credit Union, Monk Orthodontics, Canellas Agency Farm Bureau Insurance, Buffalo Wild Wings, and Waste Management. The Orient Center was bustling with activity in December. In addition to the Grinch Breakfast and the Snow Dash 5K, Orient Township helped holiday shoppers find that perfect gift for that heart to shop for friend or family member. On Thursday, December 8th, the banquet room of the Orient Center was transformed into a festive pop-up market featuring items made by Michiganders for Michiganders. 23 vendors offered a wide variety of colorful handmade products to those looking for a last minute holiday gift for loved ones. Well, there's so many unique items in there. I mean, everything is handmade, one of a kind. It's, there's something for everybody in there. So if you've got a really picky person on your list, this is the place you wanna be, buying something unique, um, one of a kind, those just, those really neat items. Although there is a minimal registration fee, the township's goal is just to recoup operational expenses, allowing vendors to turn a profit. Parking and admission were free for shoppers who are encouraged to keep their dollars in the community by supporting local entrepreneurs. With this particular pop-up, there's kind of an application process. Uh, they need to fill out an application, let me know what they're going to be selling, let me know that everything is handmade. Um, and then I try and make sure that I have different vendors. I don't want 12 different people selling the same product, so I try and make sure I have a good variety of, of items. You can keep up with all the activities happening in Orion Township by visiting orionparks.com. On the morning of December 7th, 1941, the Japanese launched an attack on the naval station at Pearl Harbor, killing over 2,400 Americans. Four U.S. Navy battleships were sunk and 188 aircraft were destroyed. The following day, the United States declared war on Japan and entered World War II. 81 years later, National Pearl Harbor Remembrance Day continues to honor the lives lost on that day. On the evening of Wednesday, December 7th, veterans and members of the community gathered for an intimate ceremony at the Orient Center. 2,400 servicemen were killed at Pearl Harbor. That began a terrible war in the Pacific, thanks to the Japanese. 42,000 Army personnel were lost in the Pacific. 16,000 Army Air Force personnel were lost in the Pacific. 31,000 Navy personnel were lost in the Pacific. 23,000 Marines were lost in the Pacific. As a result of Japan's attack on Pearl Harbor, 
over 112,000 U.S. service people were lost just in the Pacific. A candle ceremony honored the lives lost at Pearl Harbor, representing the U.S. Navy, Marine Corps, and U.S. Army. 68 civilians lost their lives in the attack as well. The ceremony concluded with a gun salute and the playing of taps. And with that, we'll wrap up this edition of ONTV News, the final episode of 2022. We'll kick off the new year with a special edition of ONTV News, where we will take a look back at all the major stories that helped shape the Orient area over the past year. Until then, on behalf of the hardworking ONTV News team, I'm Stacey Calloway. Thanks for watching and happy holidays.